advanced communication skills and we are going to focus a little bit more on public speaking. I know this is one of the areas that most people are very afraid. When you are asked to stand in front of people, whether it could be two people, five people, ten people, you tend to suddenly feel like your legs are about to freeze and you cannot be able to stand. You feel butterflies in your stomach, your throat is going dry, you feel a lump like you're being choked. All these are very common fears or anxieties that people face when they're about to do public speaking. And I hope that today's uh, video session is going to be able to sort of give you a few tips that you can be able to learn to become better in terms of public speaking. Now, the type of anxieties that we see really include pre-preparation anxiety. Sometimes you're afraid even how you're going to be able to start. Sometimes you're afraid uh, when you're trying to get information and wondering, am I able to get the right information that will be required of me during that particular public speaking session. Sometimes you're afraid actually a day before you even perform or a day before you actually go and do your public speaking. All these can be able to sort of contribute to your fear and sometimes if you walk on stage with this fear or if you stand in front of people with this fear then you will certainly not be able to do or be confident enough when you're doing the public speaking. Now how do you tackle that anxiety? The first and most important thing you need to do is you need to remember that you're not the first person, certainly, nor the last person to do public speaking. Don't think too much in terms of what will happen, what if people are afraid, what if I, I, I forget what I've prepared, what if I stand and suddenly my voice can't come out, because all those things will only further aggravate the fear and the anxiety that you have. Of course, the most important thing is that you need to be able to plan and prepare. If you're going to do a presentation, whether it's 5 minutes, 10 minutes or 20 minutes, you need to be able to know that if I am to time myself, what do I need to be able to do? How much should my content be? What is the key message I want to be able to communicate? So in short, I think the first and most important way of, of overcoming fear when it comes to public speaking is being able to prepare, prepare and prepare. And, and that's very important. You know yourself, you know some of the challenges that you have and when you do this and speak in front of either your own friends, you speak in front of a mirror or even ask an independent person to listen to you, you can be able to get feedback that may help you during that session when you will be required of course to do public speaking. Now remember, unlike before, people would be asked to make a long presentation, a long speech and when you're asked to stand, you know, you need to remember you have probably five or ten minutes that you need to be powerful, articulate, and very precise in terms of what you want to communicate. So more importantly, please remember that when it comes to public speaking, less is more. And that's a very important point. Now, most likely, as I said, the anxiety tends to build up at least a day before you are doing the presentation. You're not only afraid, but if it's your first time, it's even far much more worse. You could be having an audience that includes people that you consider to be senior to you, or it could even be your bosses and you're wondering, how am I going to be able to do this? Now, there are a few suggested tips that you can be able to use to be able to prepare at least a day or two days before the presentation. Number one is that, again, it's important to practice in front of either a friend, a colleague, or even in front of a mirror. You can even record yourself and listen to yourself play back. You'll be able to pick out some of the things that you could easily miss out. Or is it about your articulation, your tone of voice? There are certain areas that you can be able to sort of prepare yourself. Make sure, more importantly, you sleep well, you exercise. Those are things that are extremely important because you don't want to be making a presentation when you're physically tired or you're fatigued. And that's something that people tend to forget, you know. Remember, you need to be able to breathe easily. You need to take a moment and be able to breathe in and breathe out because that will help you to be able to calm yourself. And that becomes very important. As we said earlier when we discussed about the aspects of communication, when you are speaking to an audience, eye contact is extremely important. That eyeball to eyeball contact is extremely important. You need to be able to have energy in your voice. You need to be able to articulate loud enough. You need to be heard by everybody in the room. Even if you're using a microphone, you should avoid trying to shout or being too calm or, 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 or trying to be, you know, your voice is so quiet that people can hardly hear you. So don't overthink again about the reactions of the audience. If need be, as I'm doing right now, pause and take a sip of water. Now, public speaking isn't something that, as I said, everybody is born with. At some point in time, everybody needs to start. And I remember very well my first opportunity when I had to do public speaking. I was very young in primary school. And, and this was actually, you know, through the public speaking competition. The very first thing I learned is that no matter how well prepared you are, you will have opportunities you know, during that time you're on stage, then you sort of lose your ground, you lose your focus, and you can't remember, what was I saying? 
You know, suddenly you find your words completely getting out of your mouth, you're, you're dry, as I said earlier. And I think one of the things we've emphasized here, of course, beyond preparing well enough, is being able to breathe. Being able to be calm, being able to be relaxed, being able to remember that your audience are expecting to get a certain communication from you. If you're making, for example, a presentation using PowerPoint slides, you need to ask yourself, first and foremost, who are my audience? What exactly am I trying to communicate to my audience? What is the expectation at the end of my presentation? You know, are there instances where you want to be able to reach out to the audience? Do you need to be able to have your personality to come out? Because again, people don't want you to read your presentation. They don't want you to refer to your notes all the time and you're avoiding to look at them face to face or avoiding the eye to eye contact. You need to be able to interact with the audience when you're speaking with them. They need to be able to feel that the message is personal and really relates to what they are expecting. As I said a long time ago, we tend to have uh, given people about 30 minutes, one hour, sometimes even slightly more to make a presentation. Not anymore. One interesting statistic I learned the other day when I was reading is that the, the animal with the shortest span in terms of memory is the goldfish. It actually has a span of about eight seconds. Now, interestingly enough, human beings, especially because of smartphones, we've even become far much more shorter. In seven seconds, you tend to lose your concentration. Now, remember, the most ideal time that people tend to have when they are presenting is about 20 minutes. Scientists say between 18 and 20 minutes is the maximum time that people will be able to concentrate and listen to you. And if you think about it, then you need to be able to have a very powerful opening. You need to be very clear about what message do I want to communicate. More often, most people who are presenting for the first time forget that the best time to be able to capture your audience is your opening. Is your opening purposeful? Are you very clear about the message you want to communicate? Are people able to see clearly what is the benefit of the talk or the presentation you're going to be making? Because if they buy in when you're starting your presentation, then you're most likely going to be able to work with them. The second thing is that, again, you're presenting to an audience that you will require their full attention. So always check understanding. Always pause and clarify if something needs to be clarified. But more importantly, proceed only when you're sure that the audience is really with you. If you look at what we often tend to do, which is PowerPoint presentations, or it could even be actually a speech that you're reading, most people tend to lose that personality. And I remember a, a few days ago, I had the opportunity of, you know, attending a state function and having, you know, sat next to, for example, one of the cabinet secretaries reading through their speech. I must say it was one of the things that is really, really boring. If you have to sit in for about 15 minutes. And unfortunately, most people tend to forget that, especially when you're reading, you disconnect from the audience. So your speech should be able to give you guidance, at least should be able to give you tips in terms of what are the key messages you want to be able to communicate. But once in a while, pause. Look into the audience, engage them, crack a joke, but make sure that each and every step they are really working with you. Now that's a very important thing that people tend to forget and it's the same thing with PowerPoint presentations. Whether you have, as I said earlier on, 5, 10 minutes, 20 minutes or even 40 minutes, remember that you work in blocks of 20 minutes. So if your presentation is going to be only about one hour, for example, you need to prepare to have a very powerful opening. You know, ensure that by the end of 20 minutes, you probably take a break, you know, engage a little bit with the audience before again restarting, but ensuring that at every step that you are with them, that they are actually continuing to listen and not just listen, but listen with the intention to understand when you're speaking. And that's a bit about public speaking. I think again with practice you become better. The more you are able to stand in front of people, the more you are able to listen to yourself when you do your recording. You, you know you learn from your mistakes, you ask audiences, you ask your colleagues, you ask your friends, your family, please listen and give me back feedback. Was I clear enough? Was I articulate? Why are my words extremely you know, to the point that I want to be able to communicate. Because again, without taking in that feedback from the audience, you're more likely to be talking to yourself. And it's not unusual to find, you know, presentations on, or public speakers that the moment they start to talk, people pick up their phone. So you find that you're there trying to speak to an audience and people are busy, you know, sending messages, checking their WhatsApp, checking on Facebook. You know, some are even going to YouTube. And, and that is unfortunate because if you think about the time that you're standing in front of the audience, the whole purpose is to be able to have a very clear communication. And now, to come back and, or to recap on the aspect of public speaking, as I said, it's not unusual to be afraid. But you cannot come in front of an audience without preparing adequately enough. 
not just a day before, not two days before. So depending on your experience, for example, if it's your first time to do public speaking, you might need to take a little bit more time to be able to prepare, maybe a week or two weeks before. Go through your presentation first and foremost yourself. You know, record yourself, watch yourself over a mirror making the presentation, and then ask an independent person to come and listen and sit in. Do a dry run if you must. But if you're going to be effective in terms of public speaking, or for that matter, communicating to an audience that is going to be listening to you, then you need to really have prepared well enough for that. And remember, even with adequate pre preparedness, so to put it, it doesn't mean that you will not have butterflies on stage. It doesn't mean that you will not sweat on stage. It doesn't mean that sometimes words will completely um, run out of your mouth when you're on stage. It's not unusual. But you need to become, as I said, you need to be relaxed. Take a moment, breathe in. You know, take a deep breath, breathe out, and engage with the audience. When you crack a joke, for example, and sometimes it's because maybe you're the one who is scared, the moment the audience feel like they are actually listening to a human being, they are more likely to be connected with you. And that really sums up the concept of public speaking and more importantly how you can become better in terms of doing a presentation to an audience it doesn't matter whether it's five people ten people or twenty people it's important and why is it important because sometimes that presentation may be a pathway that will build your career that presentation may be a pathway in terms of a communication you're trying to get people to change their behaviors you might be trying to drive through a position for example you might be seeking for an opportunity you might be seeking for funding it doesn't matter if you lose the core message you're trying to communicate during a presentation then you are more likely to fail you will have failed not because you didn't have the correct message but because you didn't prepare well enough and you didn't not prepare to have that public presentation in a very effective way so remember all the things that we have learned about communication the aspect of being able to use your body language using your postures you know eye to eye contact for example being able to pause knowing the tone of your voice all those play a critical role in being an effective public speaker and there's no better way I could put it if you become an effective public speaker you're more likely to have more engaging presentations you're more likely to have more engaging conversations you are likely to be much more positive and much more influential which as I said not only allows you to be able to progress as an individual but also to be able to progress in terms of your professional and career life thank you so much